What's up guys, Lanny Wolf Moxie here. Um, I had a story about, I, I switched cameras, so I was using my old camera, like, or my camera on my phone, and it looked horrible. So now I'm using my iPad camera, and it looks horrible. So maybe I'm just the one who looks horrible. Look at that hair though, look at that hair though. Anyways, uh, <clears throat> so, I went to the store our last night at the beach. I went to the store to get some beer and an energy drink for in the morning. And I don't even know where the camera is. Is that the camera? Um, some beer and an energy drink. On my way back, there was traffic, a lot of traffic. And this is, uh, this is a, a two-lane road. So one going one direction, one going the other. And it's a very busy road. And traffic was backed up. And I was looking... And I saw an 18-wheeler going back and forth in the sand, and it had a flatbed on it. And uh, as my brother pointed out, I said this was a single-cab 18-wheeler because there's, like, sleeper cabs and stuff. And if you're in England, uh, what do they call them, lorries there? I don't know if there's a definition for, like, a sleeper lorry or whatever. But um, So I see this 18-wheeler going back and forth, and it had a flatbed on it, a long flatbed. Um, and I was just sitting there, I was like, man, I hope they get this thing out of the way. Five minutes passes, and I'm like, I don't think anybody's trying to help that 18-wheeler get out of the sand that he's in. Because he ran off the road a little bit, and he's blocking both lanes. Traffic's starting to back up a good ways. And so, it finally hit me. I was like, oh my god, I'm in my Tacoma. Here, I'll take you on an adventure. I'm redoing my house right now, so don't judge me. See that? See all that stuff? Read up my house, take it on an Avenger. Uh, an Avenger. An adventure. See that Tacoma right there? Yup. So, um, I, it hit me that I'm like, I'm in a recovery truck. I have a winch. I have all kind of tools and stuff. Like, I have a winch package that can get pretty much with time. It takes time to set up, but you can pretty much pull anything out. So, I pull up. I, I, it, it hit me that I'm in a recovery truck so I went around traffic with my flashers on so people wouldn't run me over or whatever and I pulled up to the 18 wheeler and I said hey man uh, do you need help getting out and he said yes I do need help getting out and um, I told him well I don't think I said I don't think my Tacoma can get you out because my truck I don't know how much it weighs 3,000 pounds maybe at the max on the max end of the spectrum, maybe 3,000 pounds. Like, I seriously doubt it weighs that much, but you know, this 18 wheeler is huge. Um, <clears throat> so I said, I said, it can't hurt if I try. I said, I can't get, I don't think I can get you out, but it, it just can't hurt if I try. So it took us a while to set up. I winched, I pulled my winch out, and I hooked it to this front bumper. I pulled the winch tight, and then I went and I dug out in front of his tires, like where the sand is. I dug out in front of his tires, and I put these, uh, they're called recovery boards. I wedged these recovery boards up under, and they're specifically made for sand. I wedged them up under this 18-wheeler's tires, his back tires. And um, <clears throat> I told him, I said, I'm not going to be able to pull you out by myself. You're going to have to floor it. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're going to have to lay on the gas and floor it. And maybe I can get you up on to the pavement. At least one wheel. And then we can redig and reposition the recovery boards and figure it out from there. So he was like, okay, cool. Excuse me. Let me take a drink from my blend. But he was like, cool. Uh, he said, he did mention there's a recovery company coming to get me. But it might take them an hour, so this is worth a try, you trying to pull me out with your Tacoma. And so I said, okay. Well, when we were about to start, when I was about to engage the winch and start pulling him, this truck shows up, and this guy hops out and says, hey, do y'all need, or, or hey, actually, the first thing he said to me, he said, hey, if you get out of my way, I will pull him out. And I kind of took offense to that, like, Buddy, I've been here, you know, 20 minutes hooking this truck up, digging out sand and putting these wedge boards. I didn't say all that, but I did say, well, we're already hooked up. Let us try this. And he said, okay. 
So I started winching, and I was telling the guy, like, hey, you got to go. Let's go. Like, slam the gas to it. And he just sat there, the dude in the 18-wheeler. And I told the guy that showed up in the uh, big truck, he had a big Chevy uh, 2500 HD. I told him, I said, hey, if he doesn't hit the gas, I'm not going to be able to move him. Like, I'm not just going to winch him out. He's going to have to floor it with my recovery boards and with my winch attached, and then I'll get him out. So the guy next to me said, oh, okay, yeah, and he did the same thing I was doing. He was like, and I started winching, and I, I told the guy next to me, I said, I don't think he's pushing the gas. I don't hear anything. Like, I'm right there in front of the 18 wheel. I'm like, he's not doing anything. And the guy said, well, just pull and see what happens. So I held down the button on my winch, and, of course, my truck starts skipping forward because the 18 wheeler, it's physics. The 18 wheeler weighs more than my truck. And I said, I'm not going to be able to do it. I said that to the HD guy, the guy with the uh, Chevy. I said, I'm not going to be able to do it if he doesn't go. And so I just released my winch and went and unhooked it. And uh, the dude once again said, the guy that showed up in the 2500 HD truck, the Chevy, he said, yeah, just get out of my way and I'll get him out of there. So I moved out of his way and I told the guy in the 2500, I said, I think you'll be able to do it because I have my recovery boards up under his tires. And he said, what did you say? That's literally what he said. What did you say? I said, yeah, I dug out under his tires and I put my recovery boards. They're these long boards that uh, they have spikes and stuff and it gains traction. Like it gets you, your tires roll over them and they suck up under the tires and then you get traction. And he had no clue what I was talking about with the recovery boards, which is probably the most G thing you could do. Be like, my 2500 doesn't need recovery boards to pull people out. But... Uh, so sure enough, he hooked up the 2500 and just smoking the tires on his truck and pulling the, the 18 wheeler was not pressing the gas when I was trying to pull him out with the winch. Now that the 2500 was hooked up to the 18 wheeler, now the guy in the 18 wheeler is flooring it. He tore up my recovery boards because he floored it and they, they got out. And I went and dug my recovery boards out of the sand because a lot of times they'll suck them up under the sand. You can't see them. But I dug them out of the sand and was walking by. And the guy who was driving the 18-wheeler said, he reached out his hand, shook my hand and said, hey, man, I really appreciate you trying to get me out. The guy with the 2500 HD that I eventually realized he was a recovery company, so he got paid to do that. He didn't say a word to me. It was almost like he was irritated that I was there trying to, to unblock the road because now we're doing all this stuff the road's blocked and traffic has backed up you know like 500 feet on both sides because nobody can get around this 18 wheeler uh, but the guy with the 2500 hd just acted like he was annoyed with me like my presence there didn't say a word to me uh, but I, I don't even know what to think about that so i i didn't I thought this was just a guy, a random guy who showed up to help. But the way he acted and when he first showed up, or actually after he told me if I got out of, got out of his way, he could get the 18-wheeler out. After he said that, he said, hey, I ain't, got a, I ain't got a whole lot of time here. I got to go. And I realized he wasn't a tourist, you know, because I was in a real tourist spot. He was a local who, that's his job, to pull vehicles out. And when I was walking by and the 18-wheeler guy said, hey, man, I appreciate you helping me out. I saw the uh, recovery guy, the, the guy with the 2500 Chevy, signing a book, like a log book or whatever, and he handed it back to the 18-wheeler um, driver. But I was just kind of ticked that I think the 18-wheeler guy wanted me to pull him out because I was going to do it for free. And when that guy showed up with the 2500 uh, Chevy, that 18-wheeler guy would not step on the gas to help get him out. He wouldn't step on the gas, he would just sit there. And I'm like, these, you know, I feel kind of set up, like I got set up, like this guy shows up who makes money doing it, and then the 18 wheeler guy is like, okay, I'm not gonna do anything, I'm gonna see if this Tacoma can pull me out, which he knows it can't by itself. If I would've had more time, if that 2500 guy wouldn't have showed up, because all, literally all I did my remote wasn't working, my, uh, my wireless remote. So with my wireless remote, I can put my truck in reverse and four low, and I can give resistance, and I can tow at the same time. 
that remote wouldn't work, so I had to use the manual. So I had to get out. I'm sorry if I'm boring you with this part of the story, but I had to use my manual remote where you have to stand outside the truck and it's hardwired into the winch and you have to hold it down. So my truck, I had no resistance. Like it was literally basically in neutral at that point because my, my emergency brake is it's wearing out so it's not holding the truck back like it should. But if I would have had more time, I have a, a winch kit. I would have hooked, there was a tree behind me. It was a pretty thick tree. I would have hooked a uh, uh, cable from my bumper to that tree and then I would have been in my truck holding down the remote while putting resistance in real wheel drive, like uh, in reverse uh, in four low. I could have moved that 18 wheeler. I know at that point I could have moved. Either the 18 wheeler is going to move or my truck's going to split in half. <coughs> Excuse me. But um, yeah, it just kind of ticked me off. I'm like, man, I know I can get this guy out, but this douchebag shows up. Pardon the language. This douchebag shows up and. Uh, it just ruins the whole thing because he's getting paid to do it. And the 18-wheeler guy felt like he wanted me to get him out before that guy showed up because now the 18-wheeler guy's either got to pay that dude money for pulling him out or that's a company guy who's associated with the 18-wheeler and that's like a mark against the 18-wheeler driver where he he um, he got a point deducted or something. I don't, I don't even know. But I could have got him out and it ticked me off that I didn't. I didn't have enough time, and I, w I was rushing. Like, you know, uh, I'm in the military, so I understand the need for let's get it done, let's get it done fast, let's get it done safe, and that's the way I was trying to do it. That 2500 guy that showed up with the HD Chevy was just like, he almost, he hooked this old strap. This thing had been in the sun for days. He hooked this old strap up from a Chevy to the 18-wheeler and started towing, and, you know, it makes that noise where it's tightening, but you could see it, the mist coming off of it, because it rained a lot there, too. You could see it popping strings and the mist shooting off those strings. So I walked way into the woods away from because I'm like, the guy with the 2500 HD, I have a safety kit. So I have a sandbag that I place over my rope. If the rope snaps, it doesn't just fly like crazy. It falls because that sandbag over the rope. Uh, it just kills the, I don't know what that's called, when it snaps, that sandbag laying on top of the rope just kills it if it snaps in half. It kills the momentum or whatever. This guy didn't have that. He just straight threw a, a old rope to this 18-wheeler, started towing, and I could see the, the bristles busting. Like, that tow rope that he was using probably has two more toes, and that thing's going to snap and hurt somebody. I watched a, on another note, I've gone way long on this, but on another note, I watched a body man. I used to paint cars, and I watched a body man. He had cables or chains, not cables. He had chain thunder. He had chains hooked up to a car and was pulling it. One of the chains snapped, and it went through another car. Like you wouldn't believe the power behind when a chain's under tension and it snaps. It would. It could. I don't, I don't know if it could, but I would believe it if it happened. It could snap you in half. That chain went through another car, went through the door, and uh, I was like, my God. Like, and that's why they had a remote where they could stand way back, you know, when they were uh, realigning cars, pulling the frames out and stuff. They had a remote they could stand way back. In case it snapped, nobody would get hurt, you know what I'm saying, but... Anyways, thanks for listening to this boring story. Uh, I do these stories because I kind of want like a, a diary. I kind of want to keep up with these stories, things that have happened to me. And I just post them on YouTube because they'll be here forever, especially if I keep staying active and stuff like that. But I went really long on that. But anyways, I'm going to try my new thing instead of uh, appreciate y'all watching. Check me out SoundCloud, Instagram, Twitter. It's uh, appreciate you watching. Check me out SoundCloud, Instagram, TikTok. <laughs> Same name on all of them. Appreciate y'all. See you later.